the best. All right, so we decided a little different approach to put the new transmission in. We've got it up on one of these saw horses, and uh, it's a folding one. It's pretty cheap, but it seems to be holding up so far, so we, we hope it stays there. <laughs> and we reinforce the top a little bit. And so transmission is just sitting there. It's about 32 inches off the ground, the bottom of the transmission is. And of course, the car is above it, and we're going to lower the car down. And the nice thing about this is the transmission's already basically level. In theory, it should line up with the dowels, and we should be able to get some bolts in there without too, too much difficulty, right? Right. So what I want to watch for is when we lower it, well, certainly I don't want to hang up on anything. I absolutely don't want to put any more weight on this stand, like by bumping the transmission Correct. and yeah. putting any more weight in the stand. So we're just going to lower it really slowly. Just so that the dowels line up. There's two dowels on it. Yep. Yeah, you can go faster than that. How are we doing okay? Fine so far. You know, we hold it. Hang on. I'm caught up on the rack and pinion. Okay, I'm cleared. I'm caught up again. Trying to have a look. It could be the sensor that's hitting it too. So, okay. yeah, that's better. That's Ooh, about where I'm supposed to. You need to come up. That rack looks like it slipped out of whatever it was in you. Get back there. Okay. okay. Okay, rack is no longer an issue. Well, you got another couple inches and then it'll be an issue again. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Alright, here we go. Steady as she goes. Ready to go down some more? Yes, we are. Hold it. We're almost at the dowel, but the water seems to be hooked up again. Yeah, it is. On the rack again. Um, yeah, okay. It's just a little bit of play. Play between this and that. Yep. Ready to go again? I know, let me get the light from being crushed. Okay. And I'd, I'd wiggle it a bit just so the rack kind of wiggles away from it while yeah. we're down. Yeah. Okay, here we go a little bit more. Oh, a little bit more. Just a squeak. Okay, too much. Want to go up? Uh, hang on a minute. Maybe I can... I met up the dowel. I met up the dowel. Yeah. So if we can get 114 volt in there. It would be a long 14 volt. Yeah. Longest one? Okay, after a 14 hour day yesterday, we decided to give it another go here. Last night, uh, after, after the previous segment of the video, we uh, raised the transmission. No, well, we sat the transmission on a sawhorse and then lowered the car on top of it and then gently wiggled the transmission into place so the dowels lined up and then bolted all the transmission in place. And then uh, we, once we did that, remember we had the four x four post across the, from the firewall to the rad support. So we could raise the car um, from there. And then that post took the weight of the engine and the transmission. We got our sawhorse out of the way and that allowed us to fully bolt up the transmission. We installed, put the axles back in and axle nuts and cotter pins on the end. And this one still needs to be torqued. Yeah. And then Kevin proceeded to hook up all the wiring harness on the transmission and the shift lever and the ground strap. And then we put this motor mount or transmission mount on the side here. And we didn't really have too much trouble lining it up. Um, the banjo bolt hoses uh, that run to the transmission cooler, we actually replaced. These are the originals. And, and even though the transmission is a new transmission, we kept the originals because the ones that came in the donor transmission had been repaired and they didn't look as healthy so they're not uh, they're not on here and now Kevin's uh, he put the rad fans back in place 
um, connected the coolant hoses top and bottom connected the uh, oil cooler lines at the bottom both of them he's going to put the battery box in and the air breather and the battery and all that stuff right here back in and that'll finish up this area oh and the starter as well and uh, the starter actually was interesting because from underneath you put you position the starter and then threaded one of the more difficult bolts by lower, hand right the lower bolt the lower bolt you started it by hand and then and then uh we just started it and then when we put the car back down you put the top bolt in and then tighten them both from from above so that's uh where we are now and um, when we get the engine compartment finished we're going to raise it up we'll build a little cribbing to put that um that that uh, lower subframe on and then and then we'll lower the car down so we'll show you that too please call the the frame frame bolts oh yeah for the front so when we pulled these frame bolts out of the front of the uh, the subframe, they came out pretty easy. Um, they they are clean. They've been replaced already. And uh, advice from my pal here is that uh, if they're rusty, clean them up really really well, and then lube them heavy before you put them back in because you don't want them seasoned in there. This video sh shows how we've got a sawhorse and then some boards running perpendicular on the sawhorse just to support the subframe. We have the subframe in place. We lined up this bolt that comes out of the, the body of the car with this hole in the subframe and same on the other side. So we kind of did our best to line it up. We'll line up the ball joints with the lower control arm. And then these bushings that uh, go on the top of the subframe between the subframe and the car, there are four of them and the larger of the two go in the back and the smaller ones go in the front. So we will do our best to line this up when we're raising it in position or in fact when we're lowering the car. We're going to watch out for these little covers. They need to bend out of the way to clear the steering rack. And we'll also be careful of this uh, hard line right here that uh, that goes to the, what is that? The, That's uh, a power steering power return steering line. line. Okay. And we have to watch out for that to go into the yeah. ball joint hole. We'll line up that ball joint Yeah, as it goes in. So there's a few things to watch yeah. out for. I think the key thing is take our time and yeah. communicate a bit. <laughs> when someone says stop then that's what we do things <laughs> are headed for where they're supposed to be yeah so folks we're we're taking our time here doing all, doing all right the steering rack is behind this plastic thing we had to move this out of the way on both sides right but mostly this side our bolts from the body are lined up through the bushings and through the hole in the subframe one thing we forgot to mention is the uh, the uh, overflow. overflow tank has a little bracket that's attached to the subframe and uh, Kevin was guiding it um, for about to now set that tank. Uh, there's a groove in the tank that uh, yeah that just drops down over that bracket. So um, just watch for that when you're putting the subframe up. That Because you can pierce it and end up with a leaky tank. Yeah right you don't want to poke a hole in your tank and is it difficult to get the tank on that after the subframe's up? Uh, you would have to remove the fan on the radiator. Oh gosh, yeah. Okay, so you want to just watch that as you're as you're raising the uh, subframe or lowering the car. And our hard line uh, from the power steering looks pretty good. It's not pinched. And how is the pressure line? Is good. It's not in the way. Yeah. And uh, yeah, everything's going good. That rack looks like it's going to come towards me a little bit, right? This yeah. Way? Well, that we can align up when yeah. we. Okay. So yeah, we're. We're in good, good shape. Yeah. Okay, so we're under the car, carrying on here. The uh, steering rack was quite easy to line up. Um, I'm convinced this is probably always an easy job, and Kevin was making a big deal of it for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> he tells me that these bolts for the steering rack closest to the passenger side are pretty generally pretty easy to line up, but the driver's side ones are the worst. And uh, what we did was we hand threaded the passenger side bolts uh, got those two in and then uh, on the driver's side he had his hand up and around the transmission yeah I can see it's probably tough to get in there and um, and I had you the yeah that's on the driver's side I kind of wiggled the steering back and forth the uh, the tie rod end I wiggled it back and forth to kind of make the steering rack go up and down and all around and it actually lined up beautifully and threaded right in by hand. So that's tight. There was a, uh, a 10 mil um, socket up there, or a bolt up there that holds the bracket on. That's the uh, one of the power steering lines. And then another uh, one here.
that holds this power steering line on. And uh, then we started working on the mounts. Rear mount is a pain in the butt to, to bolt it up. Um, so that part that's in the camera now had to, well, I had it off. Um, and then the, uh, the, uh, the bracket here that's attached to the transmission, um, we crank that in. The top bolt is kind of a pain, so you got to use patience and just get like a, a sixteenth of a turn at a time on uh, on a box end wrench. Anyway, we got that in, and then got that that rubber transmission mount in, <laughs> and um, I put it in wrong the first time. Um, so what happened is that rubber bushing right there needs to go into that bracket a certain way, and I was trying to. Here, I'll just get the light and show you. I was trying to take this bracket and slide it in like that. And in fact, what has to happen is it has to go up and in place. So you can't slide it in horizontally. You've got to slide it up vertically. And once we did that, it fell right into place. Next thing is the exhaust. So we've got the uh, a gasket there that actually the gasket doesn't look too bad. You're going to reuse that one, Kevin? Yes, I will. They're steel, so they're generally reusable. Okay. And the rear, as long as you don't break it, yeah, you can usually put it back together. If it's really right. rusty, you got to change it. Okay, so we put the lower ball joints on. We uh, reattached the uh, wheel well exhaust. panel in the front side here. Uh, prior to doing that, actually, we did the exhaust, the two front bolts and the two rear bolts, using new nuts just so that the next time they'll come off without breaking. And uh, connected the O2 sensor to the um, the wire harness that's right below the intake manifold. And yeah, put the wheels on. Um, we're now putting the air box, uh, the filter in, and the the filter cover in. All that intake uh, intake ducting that's all back in. Next step. Oh, we've put coolant back in. There's still some left in the bucket, but when we start the car, that'll all get sucked in. And uh, we need to adjust the uh, shift mechanism for the uh, park reverse neutral drive. Uh, so there's a bolt here that as after we get kind of, uh, you know, familiar with how this is set up uh, from a handle perspective in the car, you know, the lever perspective in the car, we, that may need to be adjusted a bit. Uh, Want to talk with this funnel for just a sec. It came with some adapters. Uh, this is not the actual uh, rad cap. This is an adapter that came with that funnel. You put that in and it blocks off the overflow valve. And what that does is after the rad is full, it's, it does not continue to pump coolant through into the overflow valve and, and make a mess. And there's a really nice feature is when you're really done, you think that's all you want to do. Yeah, it comes with a stopper you can stick in and lift the funnel up. So it's pretty basic design, but it's very functional. So we next, we're next going to add uh, transmission fluid and check for leaks and boy, Oh, cross your fingers and start it up. Then we'll be uh, reattaching the hood and then we will reattach this uh, windshield washer fluid hose uh, right up in this corner right here. And everything's going to work great. <laughs> sure. Nice long funnel for transmission fluid. It does get filled through the dipstick hole. So. Okay. Now this one, um, this one has the torque converter from the donor car and the transmission from the donor car. You kept them right. as a mate, right? We do have the new seal and the, the new main seal in that transmission, so that's good. The torque converter is full, but the transmission is empty, right? Yeah. Okay, so how many liters is it gonna take? Uh, minimum four liters. If you've got an empty transmission, a minimum of four liters. Okay. I usually like to start off with about three and a half though. Let's check it. Start it and check. Okay. So where we are now is we've got four liters of transmission fluid added and it still shows a little low in the dipstick so Kevin mentioned he needs to go get one more liter. The, it's actually four and a half that's oh, in there. Oh, four and a half? Okay. Yep, yeah. four and a half. And uh, the coolant, not all the coolant went back in which tells me there's still air in the system somewhere but we'll take that extra bit of coolant that we know was in there and put it back in the overflow tank and that will just, uh, as the as the engine heats and cools, it will eventually press that air out of there and suck in the coolant from the overflow tank. The um, the hood's been reinstalled, and also this uh, windshield washer fluid hose has been reconnected as well. And uh, we've had the engine started and put it in forward and reverse, and the wheels do spin. So 
with any luck that's uh it's all it's all good oh there's one other thing here um how did you adjust that uh shift cable right there kevin how did you how did you know when you position it when it's in park it's all the way this way so the, this bracket right here is all the way clockwise when yeah. it's in park okay yeah and basically what you do is you get you get it to a position like you sort of tighten it and you get it to a position and you shift your shifter holding the key in the start position and a foot on the brake because it may start in drive yeah but you get it to a point where it starts in neutral and from there you can figure it out where to position it okay so did you have much fiddling to do or not really um okay. as where it is here on the last transmission it was closer to the end here okay i just had to be a little bit further back okay all right well that's uh that's it